Hello and welcome to the Virtual Cup Podcast. My name is Meredith Oman. And I'm Jessica Stauber. We're two Catholic sisters on our faith journey and inviting people along with us to learn with us and love with us. I'm in Duluth, Minnesota, as usual, but Meredith, you are not in Amory, Wisconsin, where you live. <laughs> Normally, I, I would be joining from my hometown, but uh, this week I am blessed to be in Texas visiting my our sister, our sister Gretchen, her wonderful husband, and their three children. So we are going to do some, well, we went to church this morning, we prayed the rosary, um, we're going to do some praying, and we're going to do some juicing. We're working on some healthy eating this week. Yeah. And our topic today is going to be confession, but let's talk about juicing for a few minutes. You went to a retreat, the St. Hildegard retreat in Montana a few weeks ago and summarize what you, what the retreat was about. Yeah. Well, Jessica, in the Catholic church, there are four women doctors of the church that are recognized. Um, we have St. Teresa of Avila. We have St. Therese of Lisieux, we have St. Catherine of Siena, and we have St. Hildegard. St. Hildegard joined the other three. She's the most recent one. Um, she was canonized in 2012, I believe, um, by St. Um, Benedict. And so um, it's Pope, Pope Benedict. Pope Benedict. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jessica. Yes, maybe someday to be a saint, but yes, Pope yes. Benedict. Um, and and so I'm just learning about her. So she's pretty fresh and newer to the to the circuit. But Saint Hildegard is someone who just um, she had many accolades. But um, this retreat was based on just how God has created nature, and God wants us to be in nature, and and nature can be very healing. Um, and eating healthy food is is a big part of of healing. And so we um, learned about spelt. It's an, an ancient grain, S-P-E-L-T, -S spelt. And we um, also learned about juicing. And um, this woman who run, runs the retreat um, has used some of St. Hildegard's, um, you know, um, uh, uh, biblical, uh, not biblical, um, holy moments, if you will. She she had a lot of conversation with the Holy Spirit. And this she's from Jessica. She's from like 10... 49 or something or 1149. So this is a long time ago. And um, the, her practices and, and how she had, you know, visions from, from the Holy Spirit and um, she put them into practice. And one of them is um, just using a lot of herbs and um, juices. Like she didn't have a juicing machine per se, but anyway, <laughs> we juiced, we learned how to juice. And, and why is it so near and dear to my heart? As we've all been praying for Gretchen and healing um, Jeannie, who ran this retreat, she, um, through a variety of, of modalities, if you will. One of them that she used was juicing and she would drink juice like eight glasses a day. And we're talking Jessica taking carrots and celery and turmeric and ginger and putting it in and it grinds it all up and it just shoots out the juice like no pulp. And so um, she attributes a lot of her healing to juicing along with other things. And again, I'll put a disclaimer. I'm not telling everyone that, you know, I'm going to go cure cancer, but Gretchen has been so beautifully um, modeling for us the power of prayer and faith along with, you know, Western medicine and Eastern medicine. And she's really, um, really um, putting a lot of those into practice. And juicing is the one, one item that was left on the table. And I feel really that St. Hildegard guided me to this retreat. And I felt confident enough that if we could come together, that I could, um, we could figure this out. And we did do some juicing already and it's super cool. And tomorrow we're going to hit it hard and we'll take pictures. So I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> well, that's just amazing, Meredith, that you went to that retreat and that you're uh, taking the gift of what you learned and sharing it with Gretchen. And uh, I look forward to, to trying the juice someday. Uh, well, I have a juicer at home, so we now have two. And that's the other thing, Jessica. I said, I'm going to buy a juicer and I'm going to fly it on a plane. Well, um, we'll have to ask the people, but there were there was a couple, a beautiful couple that said, we would like to purchase a juicer for Gretchen. And so they purchased the juicer, had it shipped directly to Gretchen's house. So I didn't, thank goodness, I didn't have to fly with this like 40 pound juicer and blades. I, I'm not sure how I was going to get it there, but God provided. So um, <laughs> now we each have a juicer. And so I'll be able to, you come to my house, Jessica, and I'll juice for you. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about confession. Mm -hmm. I went to confession this weekend and confession is such an interesting 
thing in that it's beautiful and it's a beautiful way to bring your sins before God, um, uh, you know, through a priest and being absolved of your sins. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing, but it's challenging. I, I go to confession, uh, you know, there's been times where I've been good about it and then I, I fall off and confession gets easier with practice. So the more often you go, the easier it is, but I went and it was great. So I, yeah. And you, Meredith, were just part of a, a retreat at your church that tell us about it. And yeah. I know there's confession was part of it. It was. And Jessica, it's really, really great. It's an initiative um, through the Diocese of Superior. And we were the pilot church. And our, and our real our goal is to, you know, build community within our church walls, right? Really bring the parishioners together, build community, come before God, um, and eventually go out and evangelize and invite other people in. You know, we have to go beyond the church walls. And what better way to start um, that process than to go before the Lord. We had adoration. So we had two four-hour evenings and we had adoration each night and we had confession each night. And Jessica, there were several hundred people there on Sunday night. We had eight priests and there the lines were full. Jessica, some of these people hadn't been to confession in five, 10, 15, 20, 40 years. Yet they let that wall down. They let that um, that scared feeling go and they just felt so welcome and invited. And um there was a woman and late seventies, 80 years old. So someone who's been on this earth a long time, she goes to church every week. She said, and I quote, this was the best day of my life after she went to adoration, after she went up to the blessed sacrament. And she also went um, to reconciliation, had um, confession and there's just something powerful. There's something healing about it. And I'm not here to convince people. I, all, I, all I know is in our Catholic church, it is a sacrament. And it's a sacrament for a reason. And it's very special. It's very sacred. And the priest is the conduit. The priest, I heard Father David Pavanka talking about it on the Hallow app. And he says, I really don't care. I, sorry, Father David, if I'm, I'm miss, missing the words, but it's like, I really <laughs> don't care about your words. I'm I'm just being the conduit for Jesus. I'm not really, he didn't say I don't care. He's like, I'm not really listening to what you're saying. You know, I'm not judging you for what you're saying. I'm simply the the, the messenger, right? I'm the conduit. And, and when he said that, I thought, that's so cool. Because I think sometimes, Jessica, people fear like, oh, I don't want to tell the priest. Like, he knows me. He's going to see me. They're, they're not looking at it that way. If you can look at him like what he's actually really doing, he has been blessed with the, the ability to take the sin and, and offer it up to Jesus. I, right, Jess? I mean, and, and yeah. I think if we can get past that. Um, anyway, Jessica, people went to confession they hadn't gone in years. And for that woman to say this was the best day. And another thing a woman said to me, she came up to me and she just said, Meredith, and she'll know she's a listener on here. Um, I, I'll have to ask her later if we can bring up her name, but I won't. But she just said, Meredith, she goes, Jesus really does love me, doesn't he? She goes, uh -huh. I, and she's got tears in her eyes and she's like, he really does, doesn't he? I'm like, yeah, he does. She's like, I know. She goes, I just can't believe it. I just, <laughs> I mean, it was so beautiful. And, and confession was part of a part of her retreat was part of that healing and forgiveness is one of the most healing things I've heard. Forgiveness is like at the top of the list and confession for people, excuse me, one second. Confession for people, I believe is a chance for them to forgive themselves, bring it to Jesus. And when you understand that he loves you unconditionally and, and, his graces are bestowed on you. You can then forgive yourself, but I, I think you have to release that to Jesus and um, then real healing can begin. So it, yeah. yeah, it was, it was amazing. And um, oh, chills when you're sharing those stories, Meredith, and, and I've experienced it myself. You've experienced it yourself. This, um, this joyousness, mm. this joyous feeling after you've presented your sins to the Lord and he knows what they are, but you're still presenting them and asking for forgiveness and being absolved of them. Uh, a few tips that 
have helped me. Uh, our dad told me quite a few years ago that he usually goes to confession when he's traveling. So he's not going to his own priest, oh. which I thought that was you know, because that's part of it. Like you said, like, oh, I don't want Father Anthony to know that I. <laughs> so sure. if that makes you more comfortable, um, that's that's a, that's a, an idea. And then just within the last year, you know, I used to maybe write a few notes, but in someone said that they write exactly what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that now. And that's great. So I'm, I'm in the confessional and I'm reading, but it's stuff that I have written down, you know, when I'm preparing, you know, in the church before confession. And it's really, it helps me really process what I want to say and then say what I want to say and not be stressed out about have to remember this and have to remember that. So that's somebody, one of my seven sisters, Samantha shared that, and that has been really helpful to me. And then I, I, you know, most often there's the choice for face-to-face -face or behind a screen. And I've been doing behind the screen more mm -hmm. because like you said, the priest is, is, is a conduit for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So as I'm confessing my sins, I'm talking to Jesus. That's mm -hmm. what I feel like yes, I'm doing. Amen. And, yes. and yes. so then I'm just, I picture, you know, I'm, I'm not, it's not about, you know, who the priest is. It's, it's about, I'm, I'm talking to Jesus through mm -hmm. the, through the priest and mm -hmm. priests are so amazing. And the, the, the absolution they give, the advice they give, the reassurance they give is so beautiful. And, you know, no priest is ever going to say, I can't believe you did that. They are called to be priests. And I think they consider it an incredible privilege to be, to be in that role and help provide that freedom and that joy that comes with going to confession. And there's a video of father Mike Schmitz that I will add in the notes here oh, Yeah, because somebody said to him once, and he has a, a like, it's probably like a three minute video. He said, somebody asked me once, man, it must be terrible listening to confessions all day. That's gotta be the worst part of your job. And he's like, no, it's an amazing part of my job. It's such a privilege. And I I want to share it because I think it really captures the joy that comes with going to confession. And he's such an eloquent speaker that it's always fun to listen to him. So I will we'll include that in the notes. So it's, it's kind of this interesting thing, Meredith, right? Confession is so freeing that woman at the retreats, the best day of her life. Mm -hmm. Why don't we go more often? Right. That's a, that's a great question. You know, it's just like, as I health coach people, I know I'm supposed to drink 64 ounces of water. I drank eight today. Why don't I drink more water? Um, I know I should eat my broccoli, but why don't I eat broccoli every day? I think it's, it's simple as that. It's, it's not a habit, Jessica, right? It's not a habit. And I love that you gave some tips like, Hey, maybe, maybe go to confession when you're traveling, just, you know, to get back in the groove take some notes before you go and reflect, go online and, and research. I can tell you this, don't worry about being perfect. The priest is so delighted to have you in there. They'll talk you through it. They're going to be easy on you. They're not there to say you're awful. They're there to help you move forward in your healing and be forgiven. Um, no, I got sidetracked. Uh, I wanted to, okay. I'll have to come back to that, but I wanted to tell you, Jessica, everyone, it's, um, the day we're recording this, it's priesthood Sunday. And, um, yeah, it's Priesthood Sunday today. And so we at Mass today, as I'm listening to the um, priest, I was thinking about my son. My son is 26 years old today, and um, Carl is our oldest, and he's in seminary. And I was just thinking, well, his birthday's on Priesthood Sunday, and he's on track. <laughs> I mean, no pressure. You know, he's still in the discerning process, but um, so far, he's just, just loving all of it. And I know confession is something that, um, if, you know, God willing, he goes you know, is received in, um, that's something he does look forward to. So anyway, mm -hmm. sidebar. So how often should a person go to confession, Meredith? Any thoughts on that? I do. I do. I do. I do. Um, okay. when you go to Medjugorje, maybe, um, it'll be interesting to hear what they say, but, um, when I went to my retreat, one of the retreats last February, we talked about like some practices that, done on a regular basis could really strengthen your faith. And so my ears perked up praying that for me, praying the rosary daily, reading the gospel daily, going to mass weekly, going to adoration weekly, 
and confession monthly. Now you might hear it otherwise, but, but since then um, I have been going, now this is not me bragging. I just, everyone hear me on this. I, this is coming from someone that used to do C and E Christmas and Easter confession. When, when they'd say, okay, that's time to go to, I would go out of just, this is what we do. And I would go to confession. It was fine, but I embraced it this last year. And Jessica, I actually on my phone in notes wrote down confession and it's almost, I don't want to say it's a game, but it's, it's, it's fun because I keep track. Oh. May, 17th, May 6th, April 20th, March 18th, um, November 11th. Um, maybe I missed something in there. Um, and then I write down what, what I actually, my confession was. And then I write down what my, my penance says, um, December 6th, December 9th, I have three days apart, February 10th, February 17th, April 6th. Anyway, I could go on and on, but I've been just keeping track in my phone and it's cool. And it's like, oh, so when I go in there and I say, father, the last time I've been to confession, oh. I literally take my phone out and I've been just taking notes on here. Now I could transfer it to a paper, but with technology, like it doesn't even phase the priest. I just take it out. My confession's on there. Um, it, it's just, it's invigorating. And Jessica, what, what it's doing is I feel like I'm clear, more clear and more focused on a daily basis to just be open to what God has, because I feel like I'm letting go of maybe baggage. So that to me, by going to confession once a month is proving to be really spiritual and powerful. I will be um, excited to hear if you learn anything at Medjugorje, because I know confession is a great opportunity in Medjugorje. So mm -hmm. you'll hear more about that or we'll yeah. be able to hear more when you come back. Yeah. Our Bible verse today is Psalm 41 verse four. As for me, I said, Oh Lord, be gracious to me, heal me for I have sinned against you. And that's what confession is, right? We we go before the Lord through the priest and we say, I've sinned. I screwed up. I made a mistake. I, you know, I remember when you we were little, it would be things like, I hit my brother three times. <laughs> I talked back to my mother. I talked back to my mother. Yes. yes. <laughs> things like that. Mm -hmm. And as adults, for me, and, you know, we're not... It's sins of being an adult and of being stressed and acting out in anger or not treating people with the love of God. And um, it's 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 a important time to reflect and and basically say, I screwed up. Lord, help me to be better. And that's the grace that we're asking for through confession. And we kind of get a clean slate then when we come out of that confessional and Let's try this again. And I think the, you know, to the frequency of going to confession, uh, it kind of keeps you on the straight and narrow in a, in a very positive way. So I really like the idea of keeping track of the confession um, dates because that um, it creates a an accountability too, Jessica. It's like an account, it's intentional, it's intentionality meets accountability and it's just you and God. And, and here's the thing, folks. He already knows what you've done. <laughs> Just remember that. And then you might say it to, to Jessica's point, like, well, it's a priest, you know, sit behind the fence, sit behind or go to it. I mean, if, if it's that hard, you know, if that's preventing you from going, I can't just say get over it. I mean, trust me, he doesn't, it doesn't matter what you say, but if it's really what's stopping you, go to a different church, you know, drive to a different town. Um, but I promise you there. They, they don't sit there and take that home and go, oh, you should have, what, Meredith confessed today. No, nope. they're just, like you said, they feel very privileged to have that opportunity to be that conduit. I I, am, I really do. Yeah. So. so that brings us to our challenge this week. Mm -hmm. Go to confession. Go to confession. Yep. Yeah. Call, call the church up if you don't know when they are. If it's not on the website, call, ask. And Jessica, there's been a number of times. In fact, one of those, I was reading the dates. I'm like three days apart. I was like, father, I need to come in. And it was like, I need to get this off my chest, if you will. <laughs> um, and he didn't say a word. He didn't tease me. It was only three days apart, but um, yeah, just keep track on your phone. And um, if it has been 40 years, so what? It's been 40 mm -hmm. years. So be it that there's no judgment. Again, God knows it's not been for, you know, that it's been 40 years. It's okay. But you will feel, and if we can all just go show up with a lighter load and and more healing, then we can better reflect God and do his work and, and steward the gifts that he's given us. So confession. Well okay. Well said, Meredith. Uh, would you like to close us in prayer? 
Yes, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for um, just the courage for us to talk about something that used to be so scary to us. We know we're no experts, but we just really trust um, trust in the words that you gave us tonight and just pray that um, it will challenge us to continue to dig deeper um, in our confessions and praying that it inspired, you know, even just the one tonight. Lord, thank you for um, your son. Holy Spirit, thank you for living inside us and, and letting um, us um, shine, shine your light out to others. Um, Mary, if we can only love your son, like, like you do, thank you for being such a role model to us. And we are so grateful for you and um, just your intercessions on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, please just bless our week. And for all those traveling over the next week, um, just blessings for safe travel. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.